When people hear the word ventilator, they often picture a large machine in the hospital with an array of tubes and alarms, but they may not know exactly what the device does or why someone might need one. This video will give you a clear step-by-step -step explanation of mechanical ventilators, including what they are, when they are used, how they function, what risks and benefits come with them, and how recent innovations are making them safer and more precise. You will leave with a practical understanding that can help you navigate medical news stories or support a loved one in the hospital. Before we dive in, please take a second to like the video and subscribe to the channel. That simple click helps more viewers find reliable health information and lets us keep producing content just like this. A ventilator is a medical device that supports or, if necessary, fully takes over a person's breathing. The machine delivers a carefully measured blend of air and oxygen into the lungs and then allows the used gas to flow back out. It monitors pressure, volume, and flow in real time and adjusts each breath to match settings programmed by the clinical team. At its core, the ventilator is a sophisticated pump guided by sensors and microprocessors that react within milliseconds, ensuring that every breath is safe and effective. People need ventilators when their own lungs, breathing muscles, or nervous system cannot move enough air to keep blood oxygen levels within a healthy range or to prevent carbon dioxide buildup. Common reasons include severe pneumonia, acute respiratory distress syndrome, flare-ups of chronic lung disease such as COPD, asthma attacks that do not respond to medication, major trauma that interferes with chest movement, or neurological conditions and spinal cord injuries that weaken the diaphragm. Mechanical ventilation is also used during general anesthesia because the medications given to keep a patient still and pain-free also relax the muscles required for breathing to occur. In each of those situations, the ventilator can play a slightly different role. Sometimes it is the sole source of every breath, buying time while antibiotics, surgery, or other treatments work. At other times, the machine simply assists the patient's own effort by supplying extra pressure during inhalation, easing the workload of weakened respiratory muscles. The flexibility of modern ventilators allows clinicians to fine-tune support so that it is neither too little nor too much, a balance that is essential for both short-term stability and long-term recovery. <laughs> Understanding how a ventilator works begins with its basic components. An internal blower or compressed air source provides the driving force to push gas into the lungs. Flow sensors track how quickly that gas moves, pressure sensors guard against excessive force, and microprocessors synchronize all of it according to the mode chosen at the bedside. The device cycles between an inspiratory phase, when gas flows in, and an expiratory phase, when the airway is briefly open to let passive exhalation occur. Between those phases, the ventilator measures the volume delivered, checks that the set pressure has not been exceeded, and prepares for the next breath. If anything falls outside safe limits, such as a disconnected tube, an occlusion, or abnormally high pressure, alarm sound immediately so staff can intervene. Two primary variables guide everyday ventilation. The first is tidal volume, the amount of air pushed in with each breath, which is usually set according to the patient's ideal body weight to reduce lung injury. The second is positive and expiratory pressure, or PEEP, which is the baseline pressure that remains in the lungs at the end of exhalation. PEEP keeps the tiny air sacs in the lungs from collapsing and improves oxygen uptake. Clinicians also decide on a target breathing rate, the fraction of inspired oxygen, and the flow pattern. Adjusting these controls lets them respond quickly to changes in blood gas results, chest x-ray findings, or bedside observations, such as increased breathing effort. There are two primary ways for a ventilator to connect to a patient. Invasive ventilation relies on a tube inserted through the mouth or nose into the windpipe, called an endotracheal tube, or through a surgical opening in the neck, called a tracheostomy. The tube forms a sealed pass so the device can deliver exact pressures and volumes, but requires sedation during placement and carries a higher risk of infection. Non-invasive ventilation delivers support through a snug mask that fits over the nose and mouth or through nasal pillows. Because the airways remain intact, speaking and swallowing are easier, and the risk of ventilator-associated pneumonia is lower. Non-invasive methods work best when the patient can still protect their own airway and tolerate the mask. If consciousness drops or breathing worsens, clinicians may convert to invasive support. Mechanical ventilators operate in many modes, each designed for specific clinical goals. Controlled modes give the machine full authority over the timing and size of breaths, suitable for patients who are deeply sedated or paralyzed. 
Assisted modes let patients initiate a breath, and the ventilator then completes it with additional flow or pressure. Hybrid modes automatically adjust between these extremes, delivering more support during periods of fatigue and stepping back when spontaneous breathing improves. Newer adaptive algorithms monitor lung mechanics breath by breath and fine-tune settings to keep carbon dioxide levels within target ranges while minimizing pressure. Such flexibility helps prevent both underventilation, which risks respiratory acidosis, and overventilation, which can injure delicate lung tissue. The process of mechanical ventilation usually begins in an emergency department, operating room, or intensive care unit. After medications relax the airway, clinicians insert the breathing tube, confirm its position with end tidal carbon dioxide monitoring and a chest radiograph, then connect the ventilator and select initial settings. Respiratory therapists are in charge of observing vital signs, lung sounds, chest movement, and repeated arterial blood gas tests to make incremental adjustments to oxygen concentration, PEEP, or tidal volume. Adequate sedation ensures that the patient remains comfortable and prevents accidental tube removal, but medical teams also strive to avoid excessive sedation, which can delay recovery. Weaning starts as soon as the underlying problem shows signs of improvement. The clinical team gradually reduces oxygen concentration to safe ambient levels, lowers PEEP and pressure support, and tests spontaneous breathing through short trials where the ventilator only supplies a minimal flow of oxygen. During these trials, the staff watches for stable heart rate, blood pressure, and oxygen saturation, and for an appropriate breathing pattern. If the patient passes repeated trials and can also cough effectively to clear secretions, the tube is removed in a controlled process known as extubation. Afterwards, supplemental oxygen or non-invasive ventilation may be used while the airway adjusts to the workload. Mechanical ventilation saves lives, yet it does come with some risks. Potential complications include ventilator-associated pneumonia, which develops when bacteria bypasses normal airway defenses. Barotrauma or volutrauma can arise if pressures or volumes are set too high. Prolonged ventilator support may weaken the diaphragm by keeping the respiratory muscles idle and sedative drugs combined with disrupted sleep can trigger delirium. <laughs> Clinicians strive to minimize these dangers with evidence-based strategies such as lung protective ventilation, daily sedation breaks, early mobilization, and strict infection control protocols. For most patients, the benefits of adequate oxygenation and carbon dioxide removal far outweigh the hazards, but the balance is reassured continuously. Not all ventilator use happens in hospitals. Portable home ventilators the size of a large handbag allow children with congenital muscle disorders or adults with high spinal cord injuries to live at home, attend school, and participate in their communities. The machines connect to a tracheostomy tube, run quietly on household power or internal batteries, and include alarms for disconnection or low battery. Families receive extensive training in airway suctioning, emergency procedures, and equipment maintenance, and home care teams visit regularly to provide support. These advances have extended life expectancy and improved quality of life for many people who once would have remained in long-term acute care facilities. Innovation continues to transform mechanical ventilation. During the COVID-19 pandemic, engineers created rapidly scalable ventilator designs and 3D printed components to address global shortages, spurring a wave of open source collaboration. Manufacturers now embed closed loop oxygen controllers that adjust the FiO2 setting automatically based on continuous pulse oximetry feedback, reducing clinician workload and keeping oxygen saturation within safer ranges. Neural pressure support modes, launched commercially in 2025, use diaphragmatic electrical activity detected through electrodes to synchronize assistance precisely with the patient's effort, decreasing the likelihood of breath stacking and improving comfort. Artificial intelligence decision support tools analyze streaming ventilator data and patient vitals offering real-time recommendations that senior staff can review and accept or override. Early clinical trials show fewer ventilator-induced lung injury markers and shorter support times when these systems are used, though rigorous validation is ongoing. But as you can see, a mechanical ventilator is a programmable pump that can partially or fully substitute for the act of breathing when disease, injury, or surgery makes natural ventilation inadequate. It achieves this by delivering controlled volumes and pressure of oxygen-rich gas into the lungs, monitoring every breath, and adapting to changing clinical conditions. <laughs> Whether through an invasive array in an intensive care unit, a non-invasive mask in an emergency department, 
or portable device in the home, mechanical ventilation aims to stabilize oxygen and carbon dioxide levels while underlying problems are treated. Its benefits are profound, but careful management is essential to minimize infection, lung injury, and muscle weakness. Ongoing advances in sensor technology, machine learning, and patient ventilator synchrony promise even safer and more individualized care. Understanding these fundamentals equips anyone to have clear conversations with healthcare providers, supports relatives during critical illness, and interpret headlines about new ventilator breakthroughs with confidence. If you found this explanation helpful, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with friends who might benefit from clear evidence-based health information. Have a nice day, and thanks again for watching.